have seen in the news that orcas have started attacking ships off the coast of Spain and Portugal and are now even attacking ships all the way up in Scotland. But why are these creatures doing this? Well, orcas can dive up to 1087 metres, so let's take a deep dive with them. So before we tackle the issue of whether these stories are just a case of bad journalism, orcas out to get us, or the planet defending herself, let's start with an ecology speedrun all about orcas themselves. Males can weigh up to 8,600 kilograms and grow up to 10 meters in length, whilst females tend to be a bit smaller. Orcas are one of the world's most widely distributed marine mammals. In fact, they are found all across the globe, from Antarctica all the way to the Arctic. However, studies have found that orcas in different regions of the world actually belong to different ecotypes, which are a distinct race or form of an animal that occupies a particular habitat. For example, there are a group of orcas in the southern hemisphere that mostly feed off minke whales, whereas orcas in the northern hemisphere tend to have diets which are more fish-based. When hunting, orcas can swim up to speeds of 54 kilometers an hour, and females can live to 80 to 90 years in age, whilst males only live to 50. In fact, orcas are one of only three species in the world, barring ourselves and short-finned pilot whales to actually go through menopause, with females living past their breeding age to take a role of greater importance within their pod and help look after their grandchildren. So it's of no surprise that due to their hefty size, fast speeds and predatory nature, orcas have become the scary new sensation. But these cetaceans are also incredibly social and intelligent animals who communicate with each other through a series of clicks, whistles and even body language. intelligent and social animals actually be attacking ships, or is this all just a case of bad journalism? I found an article on The Guardian that claimed that, since 2020, over 500 attacks of orcas on boats in the Strait of Gibraltar have actually been recorded, where orcas would press their bodies and heads into the holes and bite, even sometimes snapping off the boat's rudders. In fact, other news sources also seem to back this figure, with more sources citing that the orcas actually damaged the ships on 250 occasions and a total of three boats were fully sunk. And an author of a published scientific paper in 2020 actually recorded 49 attacks of orcas in that year alone. He has been quoted saying, In more than 500 interaction events recorded since 2020, there are three sunken ships. We estimate that killer whales only touch one ship out of every hundred that sail through a location. Although headlines have certainly been exaggerated, it does seem from this range of sources that orcas seem to be attacking ships a significant amount, especially now that they're repeating this behaviour in Scotland. So with bad journalism ruled out, what could actually be causing these cetaceans to attack these boats in the first place? One suggestion is that, well, they're just having fun. This theory, proposed by the aforementioned author of the paper, Alfredo Lopez, who is actually an orca researcher at the Atlantic Orca Working Group, suggests that the juvenile orcas may have actually come up with this new fad of playing with boats, which has since leapfrogged across other ponds all the way up to Scotland. These kind of trends have actually been recorded before in orca populations. For example, in 1987, southern resident orcas were being recorded wearing dead salmons as hats. Dr. Wim Rutten, the fisherman who actually got attacked off the coast of Scotland by orcas, suggests that the orca was looking for the keel. Then he disappeared, but came back at fast speed, twice or thrice, and circled a bit. Maybe he just wanted to play, or look me in the eyes, or to get rid of the fishing line. Another scientist, Dr. Connor Ryan, who also advises their Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust, suggested that this fad is leapfrogging through the various pods slash communities. However, Dr. Lopez's main theory is in fact not that the orcas new behaviour is just based on a fun new trend. In fact, he thinks that orcas may now be attacking yachts and fishing boats, 
because they see them as a threat, and thus this is actually a case of defensive behaviour. This is because all of these attacks seem to be able to be traced back to one individual, who was a female called White Gladys, who researchers believed either collided with or was entangled by a fishing boat. Since this incident, it is thought that she had a sort of behavioural switch, which the other members of her pod and now Orcus Feather and Field have reproduced, especially since juveniles tend to reproduce behaviours they see in adults. Philip Hoare also says that because Orcas live so long, they undoubtedly will have a memory, almost a generational memory, of a time when the ocean was not dominated by human beings. Where there were not seismic surveys, steam engines, then diesel engines, military sonar. The most important thing for them is sound. There will be individual whales that remember when the sea was not that noisy. At the end of the day though, we just don't know. Cetacean science isn't progressed enough to pinpoint exactly what is causing these behaviours in the orcas. But whether the orcas are just having fun, or taking revenge out on boats because of a prior incident, we should remember that we are causing far more harm to them than they are to us. This is because human overfishing of our oceans is a serious problem and one largely caused by large transnational corporations who trawl our oceans in a constant drive to outcompete each other and try and have a monopoly over our seas. Overfishing itself is prominent across the globe and has caused a massive decline in most of our marine species, including some of our most prominent species such as sharks and rays, leading to one third of all sharks and rays species in the world now actually being faced with extinction. Biomass, the mass of living organisms in a given area or ecosystem at a given time. Estimates are so low for exploited fish and marine invertebrate species that they are mostly well below where they would need to be for fisheries to extract an optimal and sustainable maximisation of their catch. In fact, it was calculated in 2017 that the collapse of fisheries could put at risk the livelihoods of 51 million people who depend on them most of whom are from developing countries. It's no wonder then that if we ourselves are pillaging our oceans through our own fabrication of competition and monopolies, putting 51 million people in smaller communities at risk, that orcas themselves are feeling the brunt of our overfishing to their home and food sources. But what are the solutions to this? Well, there are obvious ones that could be applied right now. Protecting predator species such as sharks and tuna, increasing marine protected areas, and even applying international policies such as a ban on fishing in international waters. But in my opinion, these aren't going to solve the crux of the problem. Large transnational corporations will keep undertaking their behaviour, just shift it slightly to the new realm of possibilities, and keep overfishing and extracting the most they can from our oceans in their search for profit. The real solution may in fact lie beyond all of this, in switching our entire economic system away from one based on profit, to one that prioritises each other and the nature around us instead. So instead of looking at these orcas as the enemies who are attacking our boats, maybe we should look at them as the knights who have actually come to save us, to give us a not so gentle reminder of how we are destroying our oceans. But alternatively, maybe they are just playing with boats as a new fun ocean trend. Whichever reason is behind their behaviour, or whether it is something else entirely that we don't understand, we should pay attention to the orcas of our planet and the challenges they face, and significantly scale up marine protection efforts in the years to come.